Uh, we're going to start in an open guard kind of neutral position, learn some of the mechanics uh, that work with the legs. Then I want to pair it uh, from the transition from the ground to standing because I think there's a lot of value in that. So, um, Marty, will you lay on your back, please? Training position, meaning back flat, feet flat on the floor. Uh, once I step in, I'm going to practice. Marty's simply going to lift this leg up. Don't worry about any of the hands or anything like that. I just want to make sure that we understand uh, how to get over top of this shin. So uh, if you want to put your hands on the knees, that's okay. You're going to bring your outside foot in, bring your feet in a little bit closer. Your knee's going to go straight up. You're going to drop that knee over and then move into the leg drag. So again, I have a good balance, good base, light on the hands, uh, squatting. Foot comes in, knee goes up, drop that knee and underneath, turn this way. What I want you to look at specifically is how my heel comes to my butt. If I lift that leg but don't pinch my heel when I try to come over, my leg will get caught. So when you bring that knee up towards your chest and you bring that down, you see how my heel is pinched in and then it comes into the leg drag again. So I'm here, knee up, knee down, nice and tight, makes sense? Let's get it, ready, one, two. Now the next thing that we're doing, everyone's been doing a great job with good control. We're gonna do the same thing, except my knee is gonna go all the way to the floor and then I'm gonna come up. I want you to maintain good control and don't repetitively beat your kneecap into the floor. But it is important to understand that if I come like this, he can always kind of fight me. But if I drop my knee all the way to the floor, it's easy to get to the outside of the leg and then rebound into that leg drag position. So the move will be the same, right? Back is uh, generally straight, not like this, right? And knee goes up, drop it all the way to the floor, and then into the drag. Does that make sense? Do not beat your knee into the floor, but I need the full range of motion. It also will help the scoop of the leg when you come up into the drag. Let's get it. One, two. Starting training position. What I want you to realize is that this hook sometimes when you go to kick, you can place a hand on the knot in the knee or both hands on the knee. Like I said, this is not a live position, but I'm gonna bring my foot in. When I kick back, that leg a lot of times will follow me and that's a problem. Turn so that they can see, right? So I'm here, oh, he got me. A lot of people, there, what they'll do is they'll kick harder, right? And sometimes that's far, hard enough, I, I get out. But this knee, is what is allowing the ankle to hook. And so what you need to notice, turn this way now, lay your head on the floor please. The knee is outside the ankle, that's the hook. The closer that I bring the knee in, the, the less flare he gets to the ankle around my knee pit. Does that make sense? So before I move, I wanna put inward pressure and kick and he won't be able to follow me or it'll make it more difficult. Look at the difference here, you see this? Right, as I step in, oh look, it killed that hook. Then I'm here. If you want to go to knee on belly, that's okay. If you want to stick with the drag that we've been doing, that's okay as well. So a good training partner will bow their knee and hook. Person that's practicing, bring that foot in. You're gonna kick and push, and then come into the drag or knee on belly, I don't care. There has to be a push on the inside of the knee to make the ankle hook weak. Does that make sense? If you want to give 10% or 20% resistance with the hook to give it a little bit of a, a feel like you have to push the knee. That's good, but don't be a jerk because we're just learning it. Let's get it. One, two. What's another way that I could add some more uh, power to my movement uh, while not really changing anything? I like dip the head. If, uh, dipping the head does have a power associated with it and that will allow you to kick your leg up higher. The lower your head goes, especially when flexibility is an issue, right? If I try to kick here, if I lower my head, it allows me to kick higher. Uh, yes, that can happen, but it has consequences, right? Killing your own posture. Anytime your head goes below your hips, not, and, I, and I dip my head too. That's not what I'm looking for. Another one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the things that you guys don't focus on yet, a lot of you at the level you are is, a lot of things are done with your hands and you guys don't do a lot of things with your legs. And so now, when I'm pushing with my hand, I'm gonna push with my knee in opposition. So when I'm here, this is what we were doing. 
But at the same time as I'm bringing this in, I'm going to apply pressure here. See how that killed that hook, right? And then here. It's a little thing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm squatted, right? I'm pushing. I'm pushing here. Kick to the outside. What you'll notice is your leg won't be... Well, I don't need you anymore. You got here. Your, your leg won't be completely straight where you're trying to kick, right? Your heel will pinch a little bit into your butt, almost like we just did with the knee pummel. And then when you go to kick, the leg will pop right out. That hook will be really dead. Now the person on bottom, I want you to give me 30 or 40% resistance with that hook. And you're gonna notice it was easy to resist this, but when they start pushing that knee on the inside of the ankle, and this has started pushing, this pushes first. And anytime you start to meet any resistance, you'll push with that inside knee, it'll be super powerful. That makes sense? So you get two or three minutes of this. Ready, one, two. I refer to this as half guard with knee shield, right? I, I think most of us can understand that. What you need to realize is that this hook is exactly the hook that we just had standing. And so now his legs are oriented and he's funneling me into passing this way. It's difficult for me to move that way. But if I reposition these legs to the standing position, now the kick and go and knee pummeling become really easy options. And what you're gonna find is passing half guard is about getting to the outside of the shin. Not the outside of the leg, the outside of the shin. And the further back I go to do that, the easier it is. So this hand, what were we doing with this hand when we were standing? Does anyone remember? Grabbing the outside of the knee. The outside of the knee, it was pushing in, right? So, grab it right here, good. Now, am I lifting? My, there's no lifting pressure, right? The lifting is gonna be done with the deadlift, meaning I'm gonna do it with my legs and my arm's gonna stay straight. You should not have to lift the leg up. We want to maintain some of that positioning. So we're gonna go back to the knee pummel here, okay? Hand on the hip, hand on the outside of the knee, that means on the bottom. I'm gonna post my outside leg and I'm gonna to shuffle to the standing position. Squatted, not bent over. Right from here, underneath. Let's look at it again. Hand on the outside, I'm back. Control, steps to the outside foot. Pushing off the outside foot into the hand is how I come standing. Knee up, drop that knee into the leg drag. Here I am, right? Outside foot, I'm pushing to the standing. Right? High knee, drop the knee into the leg drag. That makes sense? Now, there is a concept in poker where it takes a stronger hand to call than it just does to bet. That means you want to be the person deciding the action, not the person reacting. This hook is not a very good hook. It only works here because he gets the floor to defend. When we learned how to push that knee in, they had the ability to resist us, and sometimes their back will float. From here, it's never gonna happen because he never starts with his knee bowed. And when I come standing, it's difficult for him to flare this knee to hook. Does that make sense? Yes? Flare the knee. This is what I'm talking about. When he flares that knee, the hook stays. Back down. When I come standing, it's very difficult for him to flare this knee. If you want to stay here, good. If you want to move to here, that's okay. But then lift up and over. Let's try. One, two. And then I think uh, less recognized as a passing sequence than the kick and go. I think everyone understands kick and go. Knee pummels are like money. So we're going to stick with that because a lot of times knee, knee pummels lead to leg drags. Those relationships that I just showed you were really easy to show from a standing position and apply right there. This next one is easier to apply on the ground and then we're gonna bring it standing and then we're gonna understand the relationship of the legs turning, okay? A lot of words that you might not understand yet. So I'm in this knee shield position uh, and one of the things that I see a lot of you doing that is making it difficult for you to stand is you're letting your outside knee uh, come over this knee and when it's covered it's difficult for you to get a hold of it's too close for you to stand uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to get swept okay so i need you to make sure that your knee is at least in line 
or behind. Does that make sense? So the last movement I was controlling on the outside for right now, just one hand on the uh, top of the knee, one hand on the hip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my knee up onto the thigh and I'm putting pressure into the knee shield. Now, a lot of people, they wanna pass this way, but that is literally where all of his defenses are. So watch what I do with my knee. I'm gonna turn my knee back. I'm gonna get heavy on my hip and then I can choose which way I'm gonna pass. I am gonna pass this way for right now, but staying heavy, I'm leading forward with my hips, hips, and then back. Let's look at it again. So I'm here, I pop up. Look at this knee, it's tracing back, which allows me to push with the hip. Control, don't lift. Stay heavy on this. Going forward, and control. One more time, turn. Watch my knee. So I'm here, I'm turning that knee back, I'm heavy, control, and I'm going to slide my hips forward, but I'm still laying on the outside of that leg. Does that make sense? Let's try it. One, two. That's the first move we did, guys. Getting your knee up. Getting, yeah. I'll take that one in the back. I said raise your hand. He followed direction. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That's 100%. And the really annoying part is, that's the whole move. If you can get your knee over the shin, it works. If you don't get your knee over the shin, it don't work. And so while you're fighting in there, bent over, trying to get your knee up, and their legs going up, it's frustrating, especially if they're pulling on you. For the last move that we did, it is a brother or sister, a sibling, of the knee over the shin. Now this is the knee going back. And one of the things that I see is a lot of you will look at a relationship of a leg. I don't, you should be looking at a relationship of the leg and then looking how you can replicate that and enter that from different positions. I see very frequently that a lot of people are bulldozers, juggernauts. You're like, I'm standing. I have progressed. Now I have progressed. I've progressed. And it's like, sometimes when you run into an object or a good guard, you just keep trying to go. And sometimes that space behind you is valuable. That's the space I control theory, right, that I talked about. And so once you're on the ground, this is a novel idea. I'm giving you permission. You can stand back up, right? So if I get into this position here and I start to stand, now I have the ability to knee pummel, which we just looked at, but watch what happens if I start to turn him to the outside this way and I turn my knee over. I didn't even lift my leg. Just the simple turning of his shin exposes it to my knee going back. Then I can come back up. So here's what I wanna do. I want you to start here and I'm gonna stand to immediately sit back down. That's why it's tiring, guys. It's like doing burpees. I'm on the ground, I stand up, I sit back down, right? So I'm one, I come up here, and then I turn to the outside. Look where my hand is on the hip. When I come back up, come up into the leg drag. Different direction. Let me move on the leg. So I'm here, I come up, and then I'm gonna to sit to the inside. I'm pushing very similar like I did with that knee pummel, but then I'm gonna turn my knee over. One, over, and then back up. Again, one, back, right? I'm shuffling, my hip goes low, back into the leg drag. That relationship will destroy people just going up to come back down. And when you stand, what are they gonna do? Pull, they're gonna try to get you back down, right? Or knock you down. You're like, I'm just gonna fall this way with my knee on the outside. Then you're on the outside of the legs. Let's get it. One, two. 